Oh, we got a great show for you today. The rest of the matchups, and I've got not one, but two almost upset picks. You got to tune in. It's a great show. Hey, Foot Clan, I want to remind everybody to check out FootClanGiveaway.com. We are giving out a signed Saquon Barkley jersey. Oh, that sounds nice. Superpowers may or may not be included when you don this blue bad dog. (laughs) <laughs> but look, it's free to enter. You're just you're helping us do some things like nominating us for the dis- for the Discover Podcast Awards, maybe leaving a review, checking out the YouTube channel, things that are real fast, real easy, real free to do, and then you get a chance to win a signed Saquon Barkley jersey, footclangiveaway.com. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, Brandon Bolden. Oh. <laughs> New Patriots running back. Tom Brady. Welcome in to the show. The Fantasy Footballers back for Friday, October 11th. We've got matchups on today's episode. We have in and out. In or out, I should say. Injury updates. Well, unless it's like Sammy Watkins. In and out. Then it might be both. Ballers on a budget. He's been more. Sammy's been more in than out of your lineup, and that's been a bad thing. Well, I'm just saying he was he was technically in last week, but you then he was out right away. Mike opened the show letting you know about FootClanGiveaway.com, giving away a signed Saquon Barkley jersey. You can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Stay connected to the show. We have a, a website up on the internet. It's the FantasyFootballers.com. It's a great website. Yeah, it's the best place to put a website too on the internet. Yep. Yeah. You don't want those on uh, compact discs anymore, right, no, guys? Well, we tried it with a, like a local server, but then we were the only ones who would go. Yeah, we, come pick up your come pick up our website. Comes with fifty free hours of online <laughs> access <laughs> to the UDK. <laughs> we're gonna mail it out. We're gonna go low tech. No, it, let's talk about this game last night. Quick reaction to the uh, Giants Patriots game. I joked on our serious show that. The Patriots have been very, you know, is it mercy? Is it uh, kindness? Whether it was the Redskins, whether it was the Dolphins, and now the Giants, they kind of slow play these games. Mm. You they, know, they, they let they, them stay in it for a little while. Yeah, they want them to feel good. They want the other team to so still they, have to play the whole game. Basically, they're trying to make sure that after halftime, the team still comes back out. Yeah, because it gets <laughs> statistics to build. But <clears throat> I think the storyline of the night on Twitter, look, when you isolate a game on Thursday night football, and this is all everybody in the fantasy football community is watching, you're going to make everything out of everything. And the big storyline that came through to me was the the pain, the suffering, the, the heartache that has come with being a Sony Michelle owner this year. And I had a couple of people say, hey, why why'd you believe in him? Well, I thought I was signing up for a goal line back when True. when I when that I drafted was, him. The one thing that you actually felt confident in the process of was that okay, maybe James White will get a lot of work between the twenties, Rex Burke it'll be out there. But Sony Michelle will at least be the goal line back. A hundred percent. And I and guess what? The Patriots do what they always do. They have a high quantity of goal line opportunities. And in this game, you got Tom Brady scoring twice. You had Brandon Bolden, who was in as the goal line back, back on the first drive. Both of the Brady drives, Sonny Michelle was out there as the goal line back to twist the knife in the <laughs> hearts of Sonny Michelle owners. D- what did I sign up for? Well, I signed up for the carry counts that you're getting from Sonny Michelle. 17 against the Bills, 16 against the Redskins, 22 against the Giants. I'm fine with the yardage totals, 91, 86. Over the last two weeks, he hasn't. Been, I'm fine with five receptions yeah, over the last two weeks. He's he over 100 total yards. Yeah, he hasn't been bad. That's the thing is, it's it's a matter of expectation. Yes. he's been super disappointing because in these games he should be great, and he's not great. He's just a an average fantasy play. I mean, if you said 
before the game, hey, Patriots get three rushing touchdowns, right. you'd be super psyched. You would have assumed that could be true, and you would not imagine that none of them went to, uh, I don't know, their main running backs. And, and so basically moving forward, what you just said, Jason, is the truth. He's not going to win you a week right now. He's okay. He's fine. Our league of record gives .1 per carry, so he's a 15-point something back last night. That's a nice week. It's not a week winning week. It's not what you hoped to get. But that could come in time. The truth is, last week when he scored, he did it from 14, 15 yards out. So this could be the recipe. I'm going to acknowledge it. The recipe inside the five yard line could be Sonny Michelle stands in the backfield, give him a top hat and a cane. He can do a little dance because he's not going to be involved in the play. <laughs> and Brady, I mean, what was so crazy is Brady ran it back to back times from like the three. Yeah, that that was crazy. I said, "Are you just trolling people at this point?" Yeah, I um, look. We we all have the story of the year about my fantasy team always going up against a great opponent, and I was so stoked when Tom Brady throws a pick, gets a fumble, all the wheels are falling off. Two rushing touchdowns. You're a monster because you're facing Tom Brady. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, also, I don't think you can discuss this game without. Talking about the MVP of yes, the National of Football all, League. Of all fantasy, of all NFL. The Patriots' defense is unstinking believable. They have scored more touchdowns than their opponents have on offense through six weeks. It's become comical if you face them, painful. I, I told one of the members of our League of Record this morning, the best decision you made in this league. I tried to acquire the Patriots defense in week two. I offered Josh Gordon straight up. I've seen the Foot Clan coming out on Twitter saying people offering, you know, Will Fuller for the Patriots D. What do I do? All of these offers are coming in. And their schedule's been incredible because you could see the schedule coming. But he rejected that trade. And that was the best decision he's made <laughs> for his team. Because it's an unfair advantage on defense right now. This is a defense that is currently on pace to break NFL records. We said it going into the game. They're on pace to break the sacks record. That was the eighty, the 84 Bills. 84 or 85 Bills. And Bears. You're correct. Yep. Yeah, I, I meant the Bears. <laughs> but... It's they're they're a world world beater right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, so Ryan Weiss, one of our writers, was doing research. He looked uh, the last eighteen years, which was all the fantasy data for defensive scoring that's available. The best fantasy defense of all time was the two thousand nine Baltimore Ravens, who scored two hundred and thirty eight. Two thousand six. <laughs> you guys are Thank struggling, you. man. What's Thank happening? You. Well, look, we just want to keep you on your toes. Okay. Uh, so two hundred and thirty eight fantasy points. The, the Patriots right now are on pace for 328 fantasy points. And you say, well, obviously the schedule's been bad, but the next few weeks, or the special schedule's been great, but the next few weeks are the Jets and the Browns. So, so you're saying keep starting the best defense we've seen in a long, 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 long time. And, and he could, they could add three more interceptions last night. And if you play in a Week 17 championship league, which you shouldn't at all, but if you do, and it's already started, it's out of your control, the uh, championship matchup is against, let me check this, oh, the Dolphins. Enjoy your championship if you get That'll to that That'll be the game. Dolphins' first be, win of the year. To be fair, though, if you have the regular Week 16 championship, they're at home against the Buffalo Bills. Well, to so. be fair, to get to those <laughs> games, you have to start winning in the first round of the playoffs against the Bengals. <laughs> Golden Tate had a nice night. He did. He certainly looked like the best uh, wide receiver offensive option on the team, whether it was trying to run between the tackles with Hilleman or Penny. Uh, you know, Slayton had a few catches. Ellison had a catch. Daniel Jones, at times, I thought he, he made some really good, could. really good throws. He was up against it. I mean, he's getting pressured on pretty much 50% of his dropbacks, which is highly egregious. But I think that he's... He did the best that he could last night. You knew it was going to be rough. Better days were coming for, for Daniel Jones. And he, to me, I think he looks like a real franchise quarterback at this point. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, let's go ahead and get into some injuries. What's it going to be, McFly? Are you in or out? Heading into the weekend, 
quarterback, Mason Rudolph. He's out. out. All right. We're doing in and out. So the, you guys are saying out. Todd Gurley? I'm going to say out. He, he He's had a long week. Didn't practice Wednesday. Didn't practice Thursday. I, you know, I'm calling out. All right. David Johnson. I was listening to the interview with Cardinals general manager Steve Kime this morning talk about David Johnson. He says he's not 100% sure he's going to play. He's encouraged by his conversations with DJ. I'm really on the fence here. I'm I'm probably about 50-50. Where do you guys lay, land here? I lean that he is going to play. I think That's where I am too. The pharmaceutical fixes for yeah. that back will be in play on Sunday morning and uh I I lean in. It's a 405 Eastern game. If you can, which you might not be able to, but you might be able to, pick up Chase Edmonds if you're the David Johnson owner. You need to be ready to go. You need to have another option to, to rotate in there. If you haven't and he's on your waiver wire, shame on you. We've been saying it all week. Pick right. up Chase Edmonds. And shame on your whole league. True. Yeah. Yes. Must Shame for everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Back to the scarlet <laughs> letter. All right. Alvin Kamara was limited with an ankle injury. It popped up late. He's fine. He's in. Jamal Williams practicing in full. He's not through the concussion protocol yet. I'm going to say out. I'm going to go in. He's got till Monday. That's true. Monday night game. Not that you're going to play him. This is just for Aaron Jones. Yes. Uh, he limits the upside of Aaron Jones if he's available. Yeah. Chris Carson popped up with a shoulder injury. First time Chris Carson's been listed. If you listen to his comments, he says, yeah, I'm, I'm mostly good. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> he's going to be in. But it is worth noting that Chris Carson has an injury history. He runs through brick walls and loves it. and That's how he trains. And that that's bad for shoulders, so definitely worth keeping an eye on as the season goes on. Not out. to be outdone, though, Rashad Penny was also listed with a hamstring injury. That was on a walkthrough, though. <laughs> no, I did just yesterday, <laughs> but yeah. Well, Who, at a standstill. Well, once he saw Carson on there, he's like, hmm. <laughs> I don't want to play. Don't steal my thunder. All right, Julio Jones didn't practice Wednesday, limited Thursday. He's going to be in. in. He'll Devontae, be the number one wide receiver on the, on the week. Yeah, he, he very well could be. Who in the world on the Cardinals can guard Julio Jones? No one. No one. No, but I, th to be honest, nobody can guard Julio Jones whether you're on the Cardinals or not. Well, That's if, been the case for a while, and at least in Arizona, here, here's what happens. And even if you listen to Vance Joseph, they're going to build their whole game plan around Julio Jones. They asked him about Austin Hooper. What, what's Austin Hooper going to do? Vance Joseph was, I think Mike would say, refreshingly honest. He said, I don't care about the third option. He said, nice. Good for you, he Vince. He just said, he goes, I prepare for the first option, the second option. If it's your third option, I can't worry about you. And he just said it. And this is why tight end yes. murders Arizona because they don't care. Yeah, well, yeah, Julio's going to be a huge problem this week, but he's been one. He's been really good. If Matt Ryan threw to Julio every play of the game, they would score 60 points. It's it's possible. Byron Murphy is probably be put on him and, and maybe compete with him a little bit. Devontae Adams, Monday Night Football. Out in yeah. – the, the I think it's going to be prolonged. The optimism that swelled after his initial diagnosis, it is quickly fading, at least the way that Devontae Adams is talking about his toe. Yeah, I think he's going to be out for several weeks. MVS with the hamstring. He'll play. Adam Thielen. Illness. He'll play. Brandon Cooks. He's uh, asymptomatic for concussions. He's expected to play, not through the protocol yet, but expected to pass. I think he's in. All right, uh, Marquise Brown with the ankle injury. Didn't practice Thursday or Friday. I think it's just resting the injury, so I believe he will play. Tyreek Hill, this is big. Everyone wants to know, is Tyreek Hill going to be out there? I have no idea. We, if, you, if you're leaning a direction, I'm leaning in. And I'm leaning out. Mike, you need to lean. It's time to lean. Then I lean out. Okay. Brooks, do you, do you want to lean on this one? I lean. Balance the force, Brooks. Out. Right. Oh, we're top heavy. Sammy Watkins, hamstring injury, didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. Out. Out. Hey, quick correction on Marquise Brown. That was Wednesday or uh, Thursday. I, I put Friday, but we're waiting to see if he practiced today. Okay. okay. Yeah, that makes sense. A and they've been, I think, the most overt in giving rest days to players that are a little bit banged up. You've seen it with Mark Andrews every week. Christian Kirk, I also heard uh, Steve Kime talk about him. Limited practices on Wednesday and Thursday. I'm actually going to lean out on Christian Kirk. Yes. I do as well. Albert Wilson, Ugh. you don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. TJ Hawkinson, the concussion, Monday night football, in or out? Out. There, I mean, he's he's trending in the right direction. If he's in, he should be fine, but I don't think he clears. Mark Andrews? In. Vernon Davis? In. In. Vance McDonald? Man. Uh, in, but 
I don't know if you can play him. Agreed. I was going to ask you that because limited <laughs> options for a lot of people. Sunday right. night game, Vance McDonald, back up to the backup. How how many yards does uh, Devlin Hodges throw for? Oof. Like, if uh, I put the line at 175. Yeah, I was going to say 150. So you, Yeah, exactly. You take the under. So I'm not looking to hope that it's split to mine. Wait, wait, wait. All tap passes, 450 yards. There you go. Oh, please, James. Foot clan. Oh, I'm facing James Conner this week, Mike. Don't root for him too hard. Extra dose of cheering for James <laughs> Conner. <laughs> All right, uh, a reminder, you can get game day alerts one hour before kickoff on Sunday at jointhefoot.com for our 11,000-plus Foot Clan supporters. Sunday Live, Mike will be chatting with you on all our social media platforms one hour before the games as well on Sunday morning, so we'll get you ready to go. Hopefully a great week six for your team. News and Notes is always brought to you by our Sleeper app. Don't miss big-time fantasy football, breaking news, injury updates. Some of these like, are going to come down to... Like the update we just got about Marquise Brown not practicing today. Ooh. Ooh. That actually is correct. You were so. a prophet. You could have just waited, and you would have been super right. I guess so. Had to correct it, but... But but actually, knowing that it's three all three days, does it change your in or out prediction for Marquise Brown? Um, it, it, it doesn't one of for those, me. I yeah, think he's going to play. I think he's going to play. It's one of those things where the matchup is so good that if he's out there, I'll probably start him. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction. Listen, if you have, you've heard us talk about them and maybe you haven't gone over to the website, pristineauction.com. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to cost you nothing to register an account. Put the code ballers in. Actually, it will cost you negative $5. That's right. It costs Ooh. you negative $5. Put the code in, which is BALLERS, on registration, and just have it ready. Because if you want to pick up a piece of amazing autographed sports memorabilia, we're talking signed jerseys, we're talking signed football, signed helmets, mini helmets, tons of items even from pop culture. Movie posters signed. They have amazing, and, and they're daily auctions. These are not things that are going to take you know, two weeks to figure out if you win something. That's why every day we tell you about the best deal that shows up on Pristine Auction. That's why we have our our offices stacked up with tons of amazing uh, gear. We, we swap it in and out on the show. We got a Kenny Galladay jersey up. Check it out, pristineauction.com. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, auction.com. And Foot Clan, want to thank Simply Safe. Not only are they a great sponsor, but we use Simply Safe and have used them for many, many years, long before they were a sponsor, because on average, a burglary happens once every 23 Oof. seconds. They're Pe out there burgling. People be burgling. You don't want them burgling you. Don't get burgled. So you want Simply Safe. Look, Simply Safe protects every door, every window, every room, 24 7 professional monitoring for just 15 bucks a month. It's won tons of awards. One thing that makes Simply Safe stand out is their video verification technology. Instead of false alarms where police don't go to the house because they know it's just false alarm, they confirm the break in is happening. They allow police to get to the scene three and a half times faster. It's just it's just a good service, cheap, great. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers and you'll get free shipping and a sixty day risk free trial. You've got nothing to lose. Go now and be sure to go to simplysafe.com slash footballers so they know our show sent you simplysafe.com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. All right, we're back into the Fantasy Forecast. We covered five games on yesterday's show. We've got eight matchups to cover today. If you want... Our breakdown on the Panthers, Buccaneers, Texans, Chiefs, Seahawks, Browns, Bengals, Ravens, or Saints, Jags. That's on yesterday's episode. I feel it necessary to clarify there's a fine line between being burgled and being burgered. And I am a big fan of being burgered, but I, not burgled. I burger buildings all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but one burgers themselves. You can burger. Oh, I can burger the building, man. But, but well, but I'm saying, like, it's an action that you. Sure. Yeah, unless you go to a barbecue, then somebody burgers you. Sure, but... You but know what if, I mean? But if I have been... But I can't burgle myself. C correct. Yeah, I thought we were talking about being burgered. So I see my right. point. I burger myself. Yeah, you can't I burgle. burglar the building. 
Unless no. you burgle a burger. Mm. Ooh. Burgle a burger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, week six matchups. Let's start here. The Eagles at three and two take on the Vikings. The Vikings are three and two as well. This game is in Minnesota. The Vikings are three point favorites. It's got a 44 point over under. And we'll start it off with Andy's almost upset of the week. I. Like the Eagles in this one to upset the Vikings here on the road. The Vikings defense has been outstanding. They have the fifth highest pressure rate on the quarterback position. This is something that uh, has been problematic for all of their opponents. I think Carson Wentz can get out of the pocket a little bit. I continue to believe that the Eagles offense is going to find its groove. And uh, I think they can they can hold up against the Vikings here. We know the, the Eagles defense – their specialty is stopping the running game, and the Vikings' specialty is utilizing Dalvin Cook uh, as often as possible. And so it's been rough sledding for running backs against the Eagles so far this year. And so I think they're going to be able to keep this game close, and I think they win it. Yeah, this is really going to be a matter of what Mike Zimmer decides to do when it's difficult to run in the beginning. Now, based on Mike Zimmer's history, it's just going to be, hey, we're going to win this matchup of the, the tough running versus a tough running defense. Uh, we're going to keep doing it. And if he does, he could push through and win. On the other side, if they decide to throw the ball, they're going to find some success. The the you know the Eagles' passing defense, their secondary is not that great. They're 28th in points given up to wide receivers. On average, 36 fantasy points a week to wide receivers. So this looks like a great matchup at home for Adam Thielen, even for Stephon Diggs. Yeah. It's just a matter of will Zimmer allow that. They did last week. They threw the ball a lot more, so I expect uh, – Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen at least, and and possibly Stephon Diggs to have a decent game here. And the Eagles do, yeah, they run a lot of man coverage. Adam Thielen has <laughs> – Kirk Cousins has 153 quarterback rating with Adam Thielen when they're facing man coverage. So it's a nice matchup for Thielen. He's the wide receiver nine on our rankings. You can check out the start-sit tool in the rankings at thefantasyfootballers.com. The real question is whether you can roll Diggs out there and what you roll him out there as – you know, we have them ranked 23rd on the week because of the matchup. But is that is that 23rd with confidence, Mike? Yeah. Um, I feel like I have faded on Stephon Diggs as much as humanly possible this season. But I think this is a great spot for him. The Eagles can keep up with the Minnesota Vikings while they, in the neutral script, they're going to want to run. But I, I think if Minnesota goes with that game plan, the Eagles are going to put up a touchdown or two on them, and then they're going to have to climb back in the game. Yeah, I, I picked the Eagles to win the game uh, prior to your almost upset call here. So clearly, if that is in the realm of possibility, and they're down, they throw the ball, I think I think Diggs is, is fine. He's still getting a 22% market share. It's just a matter of, is the market big enough? And right. I, and I think it, has, it hasn't been. Right. It hasn't been. The Vikings defense is great up front against the run as well. They're fourth in the league, 15.4 fantasy points a game. That makes for some tough fantasy football decisions when it comes to Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders. And what I think it means for both, and you guys can tell me whether you agree, is that if Jordan Howard scores in this game, you'll be happy. Otherwise, you won't. And if Miles Sanders gets passing work in this game, you'll be happy. Otherwise, you won't. I think that's I concur. somewhat fair. I would add that I don't expect Jordan Howard – to get a touchdown okay Carson Wentz it's a tough matchup on the road good Vikings defense eighth in the league against fantasy quarterbacks isn't going to have Deshaun Jackson Jackson didn't practice again today he'll be ruled out without question and that'll be his fourth straight absence and there's some you know there was optimism from Doug Peterson but there's doubt out there you know I mentioned it early in the week I was really scared about Sports hernia surgery, I'm still worried about it because he hasn't really progressed. You know, not even limited practices. If he's going to come back next week, why aren't you out there? So worried about that. But Alshon Jeffrey is out there. Are you willing to start Alshon? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, oh, yeah, for a guy in the – I mean, we have him ranked 
outside of the top twenty four. I mean, but that's still a that's still a startable player in fantasy. Yeah, but football. it's not an oh yeah. I Mike. completely well, agree oh, with yeah. Andy here. My oh yeah was like, are you willing to start him? And it's yes, of course I'm willing to start. No, him. I believe you said oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's the issue. Okay, you well, Kool Aid. I, I stand it. by it. What? Well, no, my, I went up. I didn't. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was very different. I was surprised. Like, you can start him, yes. Uh, he's a flex player this week. This isn't a great matchup. The matchup is w- whatever, man. Xavier Howard is not. Yeah, you meant Xavier, or Xavier Rhodes. Rhodes is yeah. not the player that he used to be. Like, he's he has shadowed twice and, or, well, basically once, and Devontae Adams had a perfectly fine game. I still think Alshon Jeffrey is going to need to get in the end zone. I mean, that's the recipe for his success right now is he's got to get in the end zone. I just think you could have other options. I mean, are you starting Alshon Jeffrey or are you starting Will Fuller? Will Fuller, okay. bigger upside. Yeah, I'm, I'm in that boat too. Zach Ertz, obviously you're, you're putting him out there. Um, I think those are your major decisions in this game. Let's talk Redskins Dolphins because that would be fun. Someone's Redskins, going to win. They are. The Redskins are 0 5. The Dolphins are 0 4. They could tie. Oh, I know the whole they can tie thing. It's not going to happen. 0 0 tie. <laughs> so that'd, be, that'd be so awesome. The Redskins are three and a half point favorites on the road in Miami. The game has a 41 point over under. I believe that the Redskins win this game. That's the side that I'm on. But you have Case Keenum expected to start this one. He has as many top 12 weeks on the year as Aaron Rodgers, Baker Mayfield, and Josh Allen combined. <laughs> and I don't care. I really don't care. I'm not starting Case Keenum in this game. Because of the changeover at the head coach. Yeah, because of the changeover at the head coach position and Keenum's propensity for errors out there on the field and what can happen outside of that. I will start Adrian Peterson. I think uh, 15 to 20 touches is a foregone conclusion in this one. And so I think Adrian Peterson is right on the running back 2-3 edge for this week because you have a matchup with the Dolphins. They're giving up 34.2 fantasy points per game to the running back position. And Adrian Peterson, yes, it's going to come down to volume, but just listen to Bill Callahan talk. He believes that Adrian Peterson hasn't gotten the ball enough. He believes that getting the ball enough gets him into a rhythm. He believes that running with no regard for yards per carry is the key to victory. Those are recipes for a surprisingly, a surprisingly successful week. And disaster. Disaster in a good matchup. Yeah, I was going to say, not disaster in this one. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very good day for Adrian Peterson. I, I agree, and I actually think you can also start Chris Thompson in this matchup. It's just a matter of he's going to be involved. You, you, sometimes you look at a pass catcher and you think, oh, they're only involved if they're down. You know, But that's, that's not just the case for Chris Thompson. He'll be involved, and it's a bad defense. So that can be the recipe for success here. If you're going to start a running back on the Dolphins, you're going to start Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake. Mark yep. Walton should see more work than Belange in this one, so keep an eye on him. Uh, Chris Thompson, are you willing to start him in this one? Jason yes. is. He's – yeah. Okay. I, I don't – I prefer not to. At the wide receiver position, I actually want to talk about the Terry McLaurin situation, Mike, because I know you like him this week. Yes. I actually don't. And so I wanted to say why I don't really believe in him. If you look at Xavier Howard, who has been a historically great – uh, shadow corner hasn't been great this year you've got the statistics right he's given up an 80 percent catch rate second highest among outside cornerbacks well one of the things that's actually happening though with Xavier Howard is teams they don't really need to target the receiver that he's covering so they're avoiding that side of the field a lot of the time and McLaurin lines up on the left Howard lines up on the left they're going to be matched up against each other for the majority of this game and if you combine that with the fact that Adrian Peterson I think is going to see a lot of work I'm not saying McLaurin can't have a big game, but I think he's going to come on limited opportunities, and he's going to have to take advantage of them. So I'm not expecting as big of things as I think both of you play, uh, you guys are. Yeah, I'm, I'm just here. I'm trusting the talent that we've yeah. seen, the connection with Case Keenum that has been you know uh, constant, even against great cornerbacks week in and week out. He's been good. Now, I agree that the passing volume will go down, but with this matchup, I, I think he overcomes. We don't have the ability. We don't have any bets on the on the docket right now, and I feel like this is an opportunity where we have like a disagreement. So I think we should make a bet. Now you can you can define a line for me. He's averaging seventy seven yards per game on the year. I'd be happy to go with that line. If you want to pick a fantasy point line with Terry McLaurin and make a bet, but we need mm. something on the docket okay. here for Week Six. I'm not going to say seventy seven because that while that's technically his average, he's only surpassed that one time. So, because of the big game. Yeah, a big yardage game. And 
Uh, how about how about a top twenty fantasy receiver? Is that is that something you're willing we to do? We have him ranked at twenty four. Yeah, but you like him more. You, he's your start of the week, Mike. You don't think he's a top twenty guy? I think that he has the potential to be a top twenty guy. If you don't like him so much, let's go with a top forty guy. I, I can do this game too. Sounds like you guys need a top twenty five bat. Top thirty. Oh, that's a uh, top thirty. We have him ranked at twenty four, Mike. Yeah, top thirty. I guess we won't have a bet on this uh, one. Preston, why? Because you're such a big chicken. Preston Williams on the other side <laughs> I of too the ball. I, too, can be loud. Uh, Preston Williams I like in this game. I think there's a great opportunity for him just because the target volume has been there. Uh, Devontae Parker, not so much. Vernon Davis should start. He's not a great option at, at tight end. I mean, this is not an exciting ball game. <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing is these are two really bad defenses. So sometimes these games can, you know, like that's like, my concern for for Andy's really liking Adrian Peterson. Like maybe Washington's defense is just really, really bad, and Miami will be able to score on them. Like this isn't the type of matchup like it's the Patriots or the Ravens where they're just blanking out the Miami Dolphins. I think that <laughs> I think it's a close game. Are they putting uh, Fitzmagic in? No. Yeah, they're not going to score on him. There will be limited <laughs> opportunities for Miami to win a ball game, and this is one of them. They yes. have the opportunity to win one here. Uh, the Redskins' defense has been statistically horrible, but they have more talented players on that defense than the than what their fantasy points against is showing. But they just haven't been able to do enough over the course of this year to put their defense in a good position. Josh Rosen is kind to opposing defenses, so it's going to be very interesting in this one. 49ers, Rams. 49ers are 4-0. Rams 3-2. and When you look at Gurley and you say, hey, can you afford to sit him? As a, you know, as a Rams offense, this is not the game that you want to sit Todd Gurley in. The Rams are favored right now, three-point favorites at home against the 49ers. It's a 50-and-a-half point over under. It's just hard because this is a, an important divisional game. If the 49ers win this game on the road, they're 5-0, and and the Rams are 3-3, three and three, and this division looks like – I mean, the Rams will be on the outside looking in between the, the 49ers and the Seahawks. So you imagine if Gurley misses this game, it should mean a lot is my point, to what his prognosis is moving right. forward. Yeah, cer certainly. They want Todd Gurley out there. I think that based – but they want Todd Gurley out there for the rest of the season. They started the year managing his workload because they wanted him when it mattered most. So I could still see them saying this game is very important, but the season is even more important. That being said, it's not a great matchup. It's hard to know what to make of these 49ers defense. You look at them – at, against quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, uh, running back. They're basically a top 10 defense across the board. They're not giving up a lot of fantasy points. But then you look at their schedule and you're like, okay, who did they, you know, they, they played the Chargers week one. Uh, uh, no, that was that, that was uh, earlier. They, they've gone Bucks. They've gone Bengals. They've gone Steelers without a quarterback. Right. And the Browns. So I believe the Niners are for real. I really do. I don't think it's a mirage. I but picked I, them up in my money league for next week because they will be playing Washington. Who? Very nice. Uh, but you know, I I do think Jared Goff at home is going to be able to do enough to you know to. I mean, obviously they're favored in this game. It's a high over under. I'm still playing. yeah. Vegas has the game at twenty seven to twenty three. So I think points are going on the board in this one, and the 49ers aren't going to be able to dismantle. Look, Richard Sherman can cover one of your three talented wide receivers on any given play. He can't cover them all. And so uh, maybe it's a tougher game for Robert Woods specifically because Sherman should be on him more than anybody else based on where Woods lines up consistently and where Sherman lines up consistently. But at the same time, he's still a top five in targets guy. And the Rams are going to have their opportunities at home. But without a running game, you could see the same problem that we've seen from Los Angeles over the first handful of weeks, which is, look, you, you tell Jared Goff he's got to throw the ball 60 times a game. It's not great. No, it's not great for them, but it's great for the fantasy players. Rams' defense has been uh, – it's been a step back for them. So, Tevin Coleman, Matt Breida, you're starting both? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I lean that you can start both. What if you have – if you have both, I've, I've – I pity the the person who has to make that decision. But if you have both, who do you prefer? I would I would be fine starting both. I mean, it depends on my other options. If I have to choose one, I'm choosing Tevin Coleman. I expect that he has more of the goal line role. But the the the, the, the Kyle Shanahan system 
It's working. They're dominating on the ground. Their offensive line now, they did lose uh, one of their tackles. That's going to yeah. hurt. They lost uh, Kyle <laughs> Juszczyk. Um <laughs> But the, 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 I'm, I'm completely sticking with it here. The Rams are 24th against the running back position. They, they're not, that's not their strength, and that is the strength of the 49ers. So I'm not scared of either running back. Anybody you want to start on the outside for the 49ers? You willing to yes. roll the dice with Goodwin? No. So what? What's your George yes? Kittle? I think sometimes George Kittle goes outside. <laughs> so, okay, so George Kittle is the only passing option for the Niners. Yeah, I meant I meant wideouts. So I no know. wideouts then, huh? Correct. All right, Gerald Everett. Mike has him as a start of the week, tight end ten on our consensus rankings. So he's a a good play for somebody missing Darren Waller this week. And uh, anybody else that you're worried about? Are you starting Jimmy Garoppolo? He's my stream Oof. of the week, so I think that there's an opportunity here because of the high-scoring nature of this game. I think you can. I've seen him picked up in several leagues. He can be streamed, well, but like I know he's your guy. But the way we the streamers work, we you we pick, go deep. Yeah, you try and go deep. But so like, would you stream? Would you go Jimmy Garoppolo or Kyle Allen? Against the Tampa Bay Buc the the Buccaneers who have been bleeding fantasy points. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Dim Jimmy G in this one. Okay. All right, the Falcons at one and four take on the Cardinals at one three and one. This game's in Arizona. It's a fifty one and a half point over under. That's a big one. And the Falcons are two and a half point road favorites. Puts an implied point total of twenty seven points for Atlanta. Twenty four and a half for the Cardinals. A lot of question marks in this game. Not knowing if David Johnson is going to be out there at all. Last week you saw a very impressive running performance from the Cardinals' offense, but they were facing the Bengals. At the same time, Kyler Murray's taking more chances with his legs, feeling more comfortable getting outside the pocket. I think 10 rush attempts last week. David Johnson had his best game on the ground. Chase Edmonds had a big game. I, I like a lot of the options on both sides of the ball in this match. I don't know what options I don't like. I mean, that's e a good e point. Edo Smith, I still don't love even though the matchup is great outside of that Ridley I'm fine with Calvin Ridley I'm fine with Muhammad Sanu obviously Julio is gonna be great our two starts of the week at quarterback are in this matchup literally the Falcons defense is dead last against wide receivers so if you're wanting to look at a Keyshawn Johnson you could uh, Larry Fitzgerald at home is a great start I just I don't know in this matchup who I'm not going to try to get in there. Yeah, I'm not going to start Keyshawn myself, even if even if Christian Kirk is out of there, uh, because I just haven't seen enough volume. But I, you know, you're talking about as like a desperation play, or yeah, yeah, I'm uh, you know seven targets last similar, week, similar to you know the the conversations we were having last week with like Auden Tate, a guy that you need to pick up off of waivers and actually plug in your starting lineup because you've got injuries or other things, I, I think Keyshawn is is fine. Austin Hooper, you're obviously putting out there. Mm -hmm. uh, when you when you talk about Mohamed Sanu, I do think he'll, he'll have an opportunity to have a big game. Mohamed Sanu, though, or somebody like Curtis Samuel this week against oh. Tampa Bay. Uh, Sanu's uh, consistently been better than Samuel all year long. 100% he's been better. I just think Curtis Samuel has a – very high ceiling this week in London. I'm kind of, you know, he's my big play option. If you're playing against a good opponent, I'm I'm throwing him out there. And I, I think Calvin Ridley comes back to life this week. He's a guy that needs a little bit more time in the pocket than than Mohamed Sanu, than Austin Hooper, and so you know this is a pass rush where Chandler Jones is great, but no one else on the Cardinals defensive line is going to scare Matt Ryan and I think Calvin Ridley gets involved I so who would you start Calvin Ridley or Juju Smith-Schuster Juju easily easily I'm actually on the I'm on the slight I'm looking at my rankings is why I asked that I have Calvin just barely ahead of Juju. I think I would play Calvin the reason that I would play Juju is I know he's the number one passing option Calvin could very well be the fourth and probably fifth because Devonta Freeman's only advantage right now in the game is catching the ball he's been atrocious on the ground all year long we talked on the serious show yesterday about players that you have to accept a new reality for we didn't bring up Devonta Freeman we should have he's not running the ball well their offensive line is partially to blame but it's been Freeman too you can see it on the field he's only making his hay in the passing game and I I just realized that you know Hooper Sanu Freeman and Julio 
could all be targeted more than Calvin Ridley. So I just feel like there might be more risk. Maybe there's more upside because Ridley could catch three touchdowns against this Cardinal secondary. But I lean the juju side. Um, just for, for context, Calvin Ridley has been targeted six or more times in every game except that week three where he had the, the one target. Yeah, I know Jason's been pretty in his corner in terms of bouncing back in Arizona. Yeah, they, they're fans of helping players bounce back. They do that. That's their thing. Uh, Atlanta is 31st in points allowed per drive. Arizona is 29th in points allowed per drive. I hope this game lives up to the billing. Yes. I think you'll be at the game, Jason, won't you? I believe I will be at the game with our editor, the Borgogan himself. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe Arizona can get another. And he's a stupid Falcons fan. Hmm. I don't usually think Falcons fans are stupid, except when they travel to our home state mm. and go to the game and root against our home team. Then they're stupid, Kyle. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. The Cowboys are 3-2 and two, oh. taking on the Jets. The Jets are 0-4, but they get Sam Darnold back. Vegas still has this game as a seven-point uh, line. Cowboys favored 44-and-a-half point over under. How much hope can we really have in the first game back for Sam Darnold in this matchup? Cowboys defense has been exceptional against opposing quarterbacks and wide receivers. I know Adam Gase has gotten to be thrilled that he has a, a shot to win the game. I mean, that's the honest truth. He hasn't had a shot. Right, yeah, they, they've been rolling out a third-string guy where there's nothing you can scheme up or do. It's kind of like having Devlin Hodges. Like, you, you're right. just, you've got you've to be able to run the ball uh, or have just an unbelievably great matchup. So I think that Donald looks rusty, comes out in a tough matchup, and struggles for his first game back, but it's nice to have him. On the other side, I think Lev Bell is the key for the Jets here. Uh, the Cowboys 26th against the running back, giving up 24.8 fantasy points per week. And it's pretty much just the Lev Bell show at running back. So this is one of those games I think Lev Bell is great. We, You know, he's the guy I've been saying go trade for. He passes by. Um, he gets Darnold back. I, I think I expect big things. So are you playing then, like, say, Robbie Anderson? We've Fantasy players have had to wait all year long to have any hope of playing Robbie Anderson. Are you willing to do it in Darnold's first game back with this matchup? Uh, I was going to ask, would you play Sanu over those two guys? I Over Dar Robbie Anderson or J J Jamison Crowder, would you play Sanu over both of them? 100%. I would play Sanu over them. I would play Ridley over them, anyone in that game. Crowder may be in a PPR. I mean, the targets could return. I'm just nerv I'm nervous in game one for Darnold getting yeah. back out there. The matchup is... It could be better, and uh, I won't have Chris Herndon. Herndon's going to be out, and uh, it's nice to think that Robbie Anderson might eventually get there. Right now, he's it's, the wide it's receiver gonna 84 happen. on the year. It's going to happen. Look, the, the schedule's going to open up for the Jets, and Sam Darnold and his, his spleen has returned to regular spleen size. Which that's, is, that's always a good thing. Yeah, you, well, yeah, you don't want a large spleen. It's not cool. Uh, Dak it's Prescott. On the road, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup. You starting both of those guys? Heck yeah! What what is See, Gallup? I will Kool Aid man them. Can I do that? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Even Gallup, right? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Macho Man. The Jets are twenty third mm, in the Sorry. NFL in terms of fantasy points against at the wide receiver position, giving up thirty point eight on the year. Michael Gallup. I want to see more of these weeks from him. He could have been a. He could be a player that's leveled up. We just. He haven't had enough healthy games to know for sure. But in the three games he's played, he's got a 27% target share in that's, an offense that we believe in. That's crazy high. That's that's like – And Randall Cobb, I think he's going to miss this game, Brooks. Do you have a uh, – it's kind of irrelevant, but now that I'm looking at you, I want the answer. I mean, Randall Cobb <laughs> hasn't done anything for this team. It's been a – part of Gallup's target share has been what options do you have? Uh, Cobb did not practice yesterday. Back injury. Yeah, so Gallup and Cooper are the passing offense. C Cobb has had six targets in each of the last two games, and all of those they wish they did not throw. Oh, come I mean, on. Isn't it strange to see a player just disintegrating I, from I, what they were? It was quick, man. Yeah, I, I don't was, think it's disintegrating. He, he is just, already vaporized. He, he went over a cliff a long time ago and lived on the laurels of – 
I feel like one, maybe two big years. And yet at the same time, I believe if he showed up in Green Bay on Monday with a Packer uniform on, he'd be the best receiver on the team. Oh, that's rude. Outside of Devontae. Because I mean, Adams is out? Because Adams okay. is out. Yeah. I, I just mean I feel like Aaron Rodgers needs a guy like him. He doesn't have somebody like him in the middle of the field. They need to find somebody and bring him in there in Green Bay if you want Rodgers to be able to. I feel like they already have Jimmy Graham. Ooh. <laughs> yes, Jason. <laughs> Throw a change. Jason. The Titans at 2-3 and three, taking on the Broncos at 1-4. and four. The Broncos are two-point home favorites. I do like them in this game. They have a it's a forty and a half point over under. I do not like that in this game. No, for fantasy purposes. But I, I, let me say something. Philip Lindsay has been really impressive to me, and I think that what we saw last week against the Chargers defense, the explosiveness. He's averaging seventeen point two touches per game. You need to play Philip Lindsay. Yeah, I mean, look, he was a top 12 running back last year, and literally other – I mean, they had to change a head coach, but nothing has changed with the team. It's the same split he was having last year with Royce Freeman. He's he's back, he's healthy, and he's been very good. Uh, two of the last three weeks, he's been a top 10 running back. He's at home. Uh, now, this isn't a great matchup for him necessarily, um, but when you've got the speed that he has – and the little itty bitty body he just he doesn't need much of a hole you know what i mean he just well, he, like like a mouse doesn't right. doesn't need a big hole to go through you are always surprised by how fast mice <laughs> are <laughs> and he is just like whoa that little guy can go through there you're always surprised about that uh, whenever they run yeah <laughs> i don't know how oh, Phil, i don't know how philip <laughs> Lindsay really feels about this train of thought we give him praise <laughs> He's an awesome he's not, mouse. He ain't that little. He's Mickey. He's averaging 4.7 per carry and very explosive. They throw him the football. They did it a lot last week. So I certainly think he's startable. Emmanuel Sanders, the last three weeks, two fantasy points, 12.9, 1.4. Sutton has been better. Sutton's better on the year. Emmanuel Sanders has trade rumors surrounding him, which you never know how that factors into – the way that you're focusing your offensive game plan. Uh, they're still tied with one another in red zone targets. Not been a lot of them. And what do you do with Emmanuel Sanders? And you brought up Terry McLaurin and you brought up uh, Muhammad Sanu, Calvin Ridley. Are you starting Sanders over any of those three? Oh, man. That's a really tough decision. The matchup is so poop for the, for the passing attack for the Broncos. I, th I think I lean the other options, man. Yeah, I mean, Malcolm Butler is who's kind of projected to be the guy on Emmanuel Sanders. He's got a big name, but he's he's been beat. He's not, you know. I I think I think Emmanuel Sanders can can beat him. Uh, you know, Cortland Sutton in this game is going up against Ador uh, Adoree Jackson. I never know how to say Ad Adoree. Yeah, Adoree. No. No, no, you, if right. you had just gone with what yeah, you started go, with, you would have sounded super smart. All right. I don't want to go not off that, brand. Not that smart. I don't want to go off brand, know. you know? Um, so, to me, <laughs> I, I actually like Emmanuel Sanders at home in this matchup. Um, I didn't like him last week, but th this, to me, seems like he's going to be great. And it's worth noting, um, since we dive a little deeper, uh, my opponent is actually – he traded for Emmanuel Sanders, so he's playing oh, him. Oh, crap. Play Emmanuel Sanders. So he's going to explode. Jason was upset because I'm the one that shipped Emmanuel Sanders over there. Mm -hmm. Except for, uh, as a result, he benched Golden Tate. That is To that play is Emmanuel true. Sanders, and Tate had a monster game last night. So you're welcome, Jason. Yeah. Once again, trying to help your team. But now, if just, you're just no. I mean, he. my opponent had Tate. Right. Oh, yeah. So it's still holding true. <laughs> is that why you're, that's why you're... Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. His bench is going to be great. His starting lineup is going to be great. Your opponent has a big game no matter what, even if it means rushing for a few touchdowns. That's right, said Tom Brady. All right, it, we're in the tight end doldrums this week. Noah Fant has run the 10th most uh, routes at the tight end position. Titans are beatable there. The Titans are 28th against fantasy tight ends. Do you have any interest here? 
there's a lot of reasons why it makes sense. I mean, but every like the, time the, the process is very, very sound for Noah Fant. The process week. is very sound. It all makes sense. And every single time that push comes to shove, where we're looking at waiver wires in the leagues we're in, where we had Evan Ingram and, and picked up Chris Herndon. And now it's like, oops, oops, we're at the bottom of the barrel and fans out there. I constantly just keep scrolling past him. Am I wrong? I think, I, I think I it's probably wrong it. to ignore him. Yes, I agree. You know, we didn't ignore TJ Hawkinson because he had a big week one. And then all of a sudden you're paying attention to that name. It, it just takes one breakout game. And you're not talking about Noah Fant in the context of Will Disley, Greg Olson. You're talking about him in the context of Tyler Eifert, Jordan Atkins, Vance McDonald, Jason Witten, OJ Howard. Yeah. Look, I'd still play Howard over Fant for the big game. I'd still play Cook. But when what you about, get but when you get into Eifert versus Fant, I'm fine going Fant with the matchup. Tyler Higby. Yeah, I'd go Fant. Okay. Yeah, I think you know the the process, like you said, it's correct. The uh, that's the one area the Titans can be beaten. Tenth most routes run and no Fant. A player too is all you need, and he's athletic enough. You know, like I said, I don't want to go after the tight end that I have to hope catches one for one and a touchdown. I want to go after the guy that can break a forty-two yard touchdown. And Fant's in that category. I, could I be, agree. It could be a Noah fantastic week. Oh, Ooh. please, please. And that would be good for the show. Yes. All right, the Steelers-Chargers Sunday night football. Chargers seven-point favorites. Devlin Hodge is likely to start this game against Phillip Rivers. Chargers heavy favorites. I don't see how they lose against Devlin Hodges, to be honest with you. James Conner is going to need to do what he does knowing the opponent is going to be focusing the majority of their efforts on him, but he's going to have a lot of volume. Do you think he sees over 20 touches in this game? I think that's a good line. I think he's going to be right around the 20-touch mark, and this is a defense that is not built to be able to stop the run. So even if they're going to scheme against the run more in this game because of Devlin Hodges, I just don't think they've got the personnel to really get that done. So that's why I think you could start Connor with with confidence. It's not that he's going to explode and have yeah, a bunch the of touchdowns. Not there. Exactly, it's not a ceiling play. This is a volume play. Uh, and he he can catch the ball. And the best friend of a constantly backpedaling quarterback is the Austin Eckler type of situation yep. he had last week. Eckler Gordon on the other side. If you have to choose him, heads up. I'm on the Gordon side. Uh, I'm still searching for a water bet for week six, so if either of you are on the Eckler side, I'd be happy to take that. Uh, I don't think that Eckler's going to see nearly the passing volume this week, and, and I think Gordon's going to have an okay day. Uh, that that narrative makes makes a lot of sense. I mean, you, you were surprised last week when the, the Broncos were, were down, were needing to pass a lot. You'd be shocked this week against Devlin Hodges if that same situation holds true. I uh, guess no takers there. Juju Smith-Schuster. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Uh, I, I, I don't want to play Juju. I don't either. I, I'm looking, I, I, looking desperately. If I have Juju, I'm really trying to find a way to not play him. It's a tough name to bench. It, yeah, I totally understand that. And he salvaged his day with. I mean, he, he had he was seven for seventy five with a touchdown, but his touchdown was on that play where it was the defender made a poor decision to try and strip the ball out and he was the last guy the last line of defense and Juju scored on that play but with Devlin Hodges man against the Chargers I am not <laughs> I'm not happy if I have to put Juju in I'll say that uh any other thoughts Vance McDonald we've talked about him I you can't be optimistic with the you can't trust anything on the Pittsburgh side outside of volume for James Conner Mike Williams last week he had 13 targets 73 percent of the team's air yards Keenan Allen went off on social media against uh, uh, who am I thinking of? The cornerback for Denver, Chris Harris, mm. saying he couldn't even hold his jock strap based because people were giving him some negative feedback on having limited targets and production in that game. This is the second time he's Wait. gone back and forth with Chris Harris. Wait, Keenan Allen was was dogging Chris Harris? Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's a reason you weren't getting targets, man. Right, I know. Well, he said, get open. He said, "Go to the tape," and he was. You don't want us to do open. that. He said, "Plenty <laughs> open." If, yeah. you, if you go, but to he the, always Richard Sermon open. also told us to go to the tape. And oh then, right, and then there was a handshake. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, only six targets for Keenan Allen each of the last two weeks. That goes up here. Yes, 
Yeah, uh, it should be all right. You're going to start Keenan Allen. I think you can start Mike Williams in a flex situation. Mike Williams or Juju Smith-Schuster? Uh, I'd still go Juju. No, oh, that's a terrible decision. Don't. I will. Oh my gosh. Honestly, I don't know. I guess I'm playing Mike Williams. I think I would take Mike Williams. <laughs> that's what I mean. This is rough. Uh, rough. Yeah, Mike Williams. You know, he's always. You expected him to be more involved. He's coming back off an injury. I like the target count, and he's the kind of guy that he can put up a three-touchdown week with his size in the red zone situation. He just worries me because I feel like every time he catches the ball, he gets injured. Or it's just he seems does kind like of roll around a little bit or limp off. Yeah, it just he seems just, it's like the commercial when they're advertising the new the, look at this burger and it's made perfectly. You're like, oh yeah, I'm going to order that, and then it never looks like what you ordered when you get to the actual yeah. restaurant. No. Oh. They let you down. That's what Mike Williams has been lately. The Lions at 2-1-1 one, and one take on the Packers. This is our Monday night football matchup. Packers are four-point favorites at Lambeau, 47-point over under. It's going to be a tough, tall task for the Lions offense going up against this Packers rejuvenated defense in Green Bay in prime time. You know, they're going to have to show up in with the crowd noise and all that comes with playing in Lambeau. Rodgers has finished outside of the top 18 four of five weeks. That is shocking. It's not good. Even if you wanted to downgrade your opinion on Rodgers, that's a shocking total. Yeah, I mean, you 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 drafted him to be something that he hasn't been. Um, you know, and, and he's had matchups, you know, week three at home, Denver. Are, we, are you streaming over playing Aaron Rodgers this week? Ah, uh, without without uh, I mean, that's Devonta so the, Adams. That's like Kirk Cousins, Kyle Allen, handsome Jimmy. I would have I, honestly. Let's find like out. I'm, Jameis Winston against Carolina. Jameis. Or, uh, yeah, he's my start of the week. I think I lean that direction. Sure, I would go Jameis. I would go Golf. Would you go Golf? Would you go Cousins against Philly? And that we talked all about their secondary, and they're at home. It's a good matchup, but I'm just I'm still afraid that Zimmer's gonna. Pull a Zimmer, so I think I would go Rodgers there. Sometimes fantasy owners have to make decisions that have risk to their psychological future. <laughs> and True. when you bench a player like Aaron Rodgers and you make the right call, because sometimes I mean, it's, four out of five weeks, it's you really going to be is really the right call in a lot of these situations. And last week you saw Aaron Jones that had you know four touchdowns, and Aaron Rodgers isn't giving you those games anymore. But if you have Aaron Rodgers on your bench and he throws five touchdowns. Yeah, it's not going to feel good. That's the part that doesn't feel especially comfortable. Matthew Stafford or Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> there I would go with the home quarterback. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take Rodgers. Last five there. games at Lambeau, Stafford's averaging 294 passing yards and 2.8 touchdowns. pretty impressive. He has a healthy Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones, whereas Rodgers has MBS, Geronimo Allison, and the corpse of Jimmy Graham. It's an interesting situation there. Oh, it's man. certainly an interesting situation, but I think And context, I don't I don't blame you. I'm just Yeah, context to the to the last 5 games at Lambeau, Green Bay over the last several years has just been a terrible defense, a defense you want to throw the ball against. They don't look that way this year. Right now they're top 10 against wide receiver, top 10 against quarterback. So, I you know, I I think that this isn't the same Green Bay team uh of the Mike McCarthy era that Stafford was used to. Now the Packers do allow the highest rush success rate in football, giving up 28.5 fantasy points per game to the running back position. Kerryon Johnson is averaging 18.5 rushing attempts per game. The Lions have the fifth highest rush uh, run play uh, rate in football. So all things add up to a very solid Kerryon Johnson start yes. after the bye week. Yeah, all in. Man, I took... We need a carry-on drop because you got a carry-on. All in. You need a carry on drop. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Carry on my wayward son. I apologize because I was. I was struggling. I, I mean, I started the show. Oh, I know what button you were looking for. How many am I allowed to have? Yeah, as, as many, many as, as you, you want. believe in. Andy's almost upset of the week. This game means a lot to Detroit. They're coming off a bye week, two weeks to prepare. Very impressive on the season. 
I think that they could get him. I think that they could get him. It's rare when a team gets a player back healthy and it hurts them. And that's a situation we won't we won't know, but if Jamal Williams comes back for the Packers, they're going to use him and that will stop a few drives here and there. The 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 Lions have not been great against running back Aaron Jones has been on fire. I feel like if it's just the Aaron Jones show, it's better for the Packers, not just for fantasy, but like actually for the game. All right, that is it for the matchups. An injury update for you. Adam Thielen returned to practice. He'll be fine. We've got one more segment. Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. All right, this has been a lot of fun each and every week, and you can come participate in the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. Tons of Foot Clan listeners. FanDuel.com slash ballers. And it doesn't matter if you've been in yet. This is not uh, continuous. Every single week is a new contest for your chance to win. You can get in now, any week at all, and you can have that chance to win the grand prize. Which is an all-expenses-paid trip to come to Arizona, hang out with us, see a show. Ballers on a budget each and every week. We give you our bargain picks for the weekend. Uh, By the way, we also give away DFS passes to the winners of that Mm -hmm. leaderboard Mm -hmm. series. I'm going to go Chase Edmonds. Chase Edmonds is as cheap as it comes at the running back position. If DJ is ruled out, I think a lot of people are going to be pivoting on the bargain price of Chase Edmonds. If DJ's out, then Chase Edmonds becomes the free square for this weekend. So how how are you feeling, though, that if DJ's in, you still want that budget price? I'm so on the fence with that. Okay. Uh, I think that really depends on what we hear about David Johnson, snap counts, things like that. I think you have an opportunity there where if, if it's kind of game time decision, things aren't sounding great, you think he's going to be limited, people could pivot away from Chase Edmonds quickly and then you get the bargain price on him. So that's my pick for Ballers on a Budget this week. Yeah, for me, I've, I've got two names here. One that I think is a great blow-up potential that's cheaper, which is Curtis Samuel. He's only $5,300. That He's got a lot of those stats that we saw in the Will Fuller, you know, those predictive air yards and targets and things that are coming his way. The matchup is right. A lot of things say Curtis Samuel could have a big blow-up game, and he's super cheap. But I don't think the odds are as high as my other pick, which is Calvin Ridley, a little bit more money, 5500 I I actually believe in Calvin Ridley. I think he will get the job done, not that he could get the job done. So those two picks, they would free you up for a lot of money at running back, put your, you know, all just ride that CMC yes. train. I think there's about a 0% chance that the Cardinals – don't give up a 50-yard touchdown in this game to through, somebody through, through the air. Yeah. Now it might be might end up being Julio, but if it's not Julio, it's going to end up being Calvin Ridley. Now, Jason, you want you want to talk about being free? <laughs> oh man, is this I, real? This is 100% real because what? because this is how you win tournaments. You free up the cash so you can have Christian McCaffrey. Le'Veon Bell, you can have all the super high but, volume but studs. But this isn't a million person tournament. You just got to beat a few hundred. Yeah. It's limited. But look, Dante Pettis, Whoa. I know that Brooks will approve of this move because now this, you want to talk about a budget? He is only $100 more than the absolute lowest priced wide receivers this weekend at $4,600. The game has a 50 point over under. He had the highest snap percentage of any wide receiver for San Francisco. He had a, a target. He dropped it. But had he caught that pass, he would have easily ran in for a 26-yard touchdown. I do have one of his highlight videos uh, <laughs> queued up. Look, I ate the rat burger last week with Kirk Cousins, and it turned out to be a delicious, delicious Sandwich. grass-fed <laughs> beef burger. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, you're right about the tournament strategy. If you... If you're looking at the snap count and you say, hey, if I hit on Dante Pettis at 4,600... He does, and he doesn't have to do very much. To I don't pay think out he's value. very proud to have the back of his football card say only a hundred dollars higher than the lowest no. price wide receivers. No, he's not. But it's still a fact. <laughs> it's still a fact. <laughs> fanduelcom slash ballers to participate in the leaderboard series with us each and every week. That's fanduelcom slash ballers. I hope you enjoy your weekend out there. I hope you enjoy these games. Hope you win. Thank I hope, you. I hope I win. I do not hope you win. I hope everyone wins. (laughs) Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Bookland, don't forget, Simply Safe makes home security easy with no contract, no hidden fees, no fine print. Just 15 bucks a month, you get 24-7 professional monitoring throughout your home, and Simply Safe uses their revolutionary video verification technology to visually confirm that break-ins are happening. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers and you'll get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers simplysafe.com slash footballers.